Hello everyone, and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple scrolling platformer. Now the basics to doing this are pretty easy and not hard to come by, so let's just get started. So a scrolling platformer is when you have tiles and stuff and you have your player and uh, when you walk your player your player is kind of going to look like it's in one spot almost, but your tiles are going to be moving. So you have a movable environment. So that's what we are going to be getting into today. And so yes, you might have seen the code on some other scrolling platformers on Scratch, and they are a little more complex. And that is because this is the easiest way to make one. So I'm not going to be getting into some real advanced code, but I will get into some basics. Okay, so for starters, let's create our player sprite. Um, for now, I am just going to have this square. That's probably what I'm going to use most often because it's just the simplest to work with. So I now have our player sprite. Um, the edges are a little uneven, but that's just because Scratch does that. So maybe, da -da, nope, that did not help at all. Uh, anyways, so now we are going to create our level sprite. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to kind of make it like a grassy color, I'd say. Uh, let's see here. Do this. Mm -hmm. Design your entire level and make it small. So, I'll show you what I mean. Alright, I'm going to paste that one here. And then, let's see. So, here's what you're going to want to do. I'm going to go with 500. Set your sprite, your level sprite, to 500. And so now, real quickly, I'm going to reposition everything. Uh, okay. So, right zero all right so of course now we have this a, a ginormous thingy and so make sure everything is kind of leveled out so if you're gonna want your ground to be at the bottom of the screen then do something like this and then kind of figure out how jumps would be like is that a big jump no not necessarily and so now move all of this all the way to the beginning. And then now you can work on your level. And so, yes, so I'm not going to get into anything super huge, but uh, all right, just some pretty basic jumps, I guess you could say. So here we go. Ta -da. Uh, if you want a simpler way to copy and paste, Control C and then we'll copy and then Control V to paste. <clears throat> I've been working with that and it is a lifesaver. So, yeah. Okay. So now, boom, there we have it. All right. So, create something that could be like a portal to the next level. Do, do. Okay. Here's our portal to the next level. Uh,. Gonna make it smaller since everything's already huge here. Okay. So <clears throat> now I'm gonna drag everything to the start. So here we are at the start of the level. And I guess this guy could be a little bit bigger because his world is bigger. Or you can just move this down a bit. And yeah. Okay. So here is what we are going to do. So start off by positioning your player in the very middle of the screen, at least for the X position. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is messing with me right now. <coughs> okay, so start by putting your player in the middle of the screen with your X position. Your Y position can be whatever you need to, but have the player in the middle. And now to make sure he's not going to fall, make sure that this also is somewhere, somewhere where the player can land. Okay, so we're going to start in my last tutorial. I did a smooth movement kind of tutorial, 
And so we are going to go from that and use our falling and our gravity and our jumping. So we're going to go when flag is clicked, forever, if, and then go to not, and then we'll do touching level because we're going to detect if we are not touching the level. Um, again, if you want some more documentation on what all of this means, check out my last tutorial where I did some different movements and stuff. Um, okay, so if not touching level, we're going to go create a variable real quick. I don't think you really need the my variable unless you actually use that. So I'm going to make this local, so for this sprite only, and I'm going to call it y vel, which means the y velocity. <clears throat> okay, so if not touching level, we are going to change y vel by minus 1. Okay, so make sure you got this, and then we will work with that. Okay, so now that we have this, what you're going to do is, you can copy this, I guess, and do if touching level, we are going to set YVEL to zero. Um, gonna get rid of that. So we're gonna set YVEL to zero. And then inside of this, we're going to do if, and then boom, if key space is pressed. I'm not really sure why it's, lagging right now it's not usually like that so if key space is pressed oh it's because i had it running this whole time my bad okay if key space is pressed we are going to set yvel to five all right or no 15 <laughs> five is not well i mean it depends so right now i'm going to set it to five and what this is going to do is Oh wait, yeah, it's not gonna do anything yet. All right, so go over to motion and do if, or not if, uh, change y by, and then yvel. So a quick run over, if you're not touching it, it's gonna change a variable and keep decreasing until you are, and then once you are, it's gonna set it to zero. And if you're touching it and you press space, it'll set it to five. <clears throat> and then it will always change your y position by that variable and i don't even know what just happened this hap this happened last time where is my player come on dude do better yes there we go so now we have a jump it's very small but here's why <clears throat> all right so go over to your level real quick I guess I could increase this by a bit, so maybe 10. Alright, so now what you're going to do is go over to your level and do when flag is clicked, forever. And then you are going to do this, go to. Real quickly, chain, make a variable called scroll x. Um, <clears throat> for now, I'm going to have it public so any sprite can use it. So scroll X will be for the X. And then here's what we're going to do for the Y. All right. So let me test something real quick. If I do this, uh, okay, nope, not that. Okay, so I'm going to select my player here and then Y position of player divided by three. Let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna take out scroll X because it's gonna mess up first okay so obviously that doesn't work uh let's try five let's try 10 nope 15 it is no 20 25 okay 50 i don't even know what's happening uh let's try minus five hmm. Okay, so obviously this isn't right. So, real quickly, I'm going to pause, and then I will be back once I have this script for you. Alright, so I finally got the script done, and it's along the lines of what I was working with, just I had a tiny problem. So, here's what we are going to do. So, we are going to set the Y position of our level 
to the y position of our player divided by negative 2. And so this variable might be different depending on the size of your level, the size of your player, um, all that stuff. So tr if, if this doesn't work, just leave it as is. But the only thing that happens with this is this. Boom. Your level will scroll downwards whenever, you know, whenever you jump. So it's just like, it's like the camera is following our player pretty much. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah. If none of this works for you, or you can't find the right value for it, then just leave it empty. Leave it at zero, or whatever Y position works best for you. Um, so now we are going to set the X position of this guy to scroll X. And so here's what I'm going to have. So we are going to control scroll X in our player. So you don't have to, but... I'm going to since collision will be required for this thing right here so in fact if you want to work on a collision real quick come over into your uh, your level sprite and create an outline of an object that is different from any other outline in your in your in your game so boom we have a wall right right here. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Um, I guess I'll change the color of this to be like some darker color. Okay, so now we're going to work on our movement real quick. So I'm going to set this guy to have a an X position of zero. You can set it to whatever you want as long as it's not going to fall. So when flag is clicked, forever. And then we're going to do if key let's see right arrow okay uh i'm gonna use this by the way in a second for our collision so if key right arrow is pressed we are going to change scroll x by negative eight so the reason why we are going negative when we're going when we're pressing the right arrow because normally the right arrow would mean we're changing something by a positive value well the reason we aren't right now is because when we are going right we are going to want our level to go left otherwise it's going to be the reverse so when we try to go right it's going to go left and so that's why we want our level to change by a negative value so it'll still look like our player is changed by positive value. So, okay. Uh, in here, what you're going to do is this. If, and then not. I think this is right. If not touching this thing. This, this simple new outline. Um, let's see. Here we are going to change. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to work on the script real quick, and then I will be right back. Okay, so we now have our script ready. <clears throat> so, here's what's going to happen. So, you are going to do, when key right arrow is pressed, change X by 10. And so what this is going to do is it's going to make our player sprite move forward. Now inside after this you're gonna have if not touching and you'll have whatever color is your collision collision color and then you'll change your scroll X by negative 8 so this will make our level actually move now if it ends up touching the level pretty much uh, it will stop doing this and it will now move our player backwards which will keep us from colliding and so the same thing is done here and because right arrow is positive we are going to firstly change it by a positive number and then by a negative number that way since we're going forwards it'll make us forwards but then if we're touching this it'll place us backwards that way we now do not even get stuck in the wall so I guess here we go oh almost fell there so now look I have a nice and simple collision and yeah it works on both sides I don't get stuck in the wall unless of course I'm up here 
but that can easily be fixed by going into your level sprite and then changing that. So how could I do this? Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, here we go. Alright. So I'm going to zoom in on that guy. And then I am going to... Do, 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 do. Let's see. Here we go. Just, just kind of color over it. Of course, this isn't the neatest way to do it, but I'm, uh, I'm just trying to get this video done for you guys. So here we go. So now you have scrolling. You have some nice simple scrolling, and then, boom, you have a level. And so, there you go. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so here's what you would do now. So we're gonna start with getting our levels. So the easiest thing to do is create a level variable. So just gonna create that, and when flag is clicked, I'd say set level to one. Um, so we got set level to one. And now what you'll do is forever, and then you're gonna set the costume of this level sprite to level. So what this will do is it'll keep changing your level costume based on what level you're on. So your level two can be like, just duplicate this and make a new level and call it level two. So let's say if we go here, let's find our our little winning portal and do like when flag is clicked and then let's see here. Forever if and then touching color you would do this here. Whichever color is yours. So you do that. And then you would change your level by one. So if you're touching this, it'll move on to the next level. Uh, so yes. And then what I would also do just to make sure everything's going to work right, I would wait until not touching it. That way, it'll wait until you stopped touching that to run the script again. That way it won't do some crazy thing like change it and you'll be on some random level um so yes now you have this new level changing system and yeah all right so let's see here what should we work with now so if you want to detect a fall well here's what you can do you'll do when flag is clicked forever and then i'd say if y position is less than 167 and just change this to be whatever works best for you forever if and then and I'm gonna do 165 cuz that's somewhere in between so if Y position is less than negative 165 what you are going to do is broadcast restart so here is how we are going to detect a kill restart and so let's see here we'll also do when I receive restart we are going to go to zero zero ta-da there we go uh, okay and we also are going to use our level sprite again and do okay so whenever restart is broadcasted this will be the start of either a new level or whatever so when i receive restart um i'm gonna go here which will be the middle of our new level i'm gonna set that to 45 and this to 1 115. so yeah uh let's see here we're gonna do the same in here we're gonna broadcast restart as well that way everything gets reset and now uh, hello there. That's not supposed to happen at all. Um, okay. I, d I don't really know what to say about that. So, when flag is clicked, we're going to broadcast restart. Um, okay. So, it seems as though I have messed up a variable somewhere in my, in my level sprite. Uh, no? 
I'm I'm very confused right now. One 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 zero. Okay, so that's working. And now, okay. Okay, so, oh, it's scroll X. That's what's happening. We're gonna set. Okay, I get what's going on right here. Uh, okay, so when flag is clicked, we are going to set scroll X to which whichever X position you want to spawn your player at. That's why. Uh, also, I'm gonna make my player go to the front layer. Um, okay, and now let's let's see how this goes. All right, so we have collision. We don't get stuck in the wall. Oh, 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 oh. Let's okay, okay. That's that's what's happening. So when we want to die, uh, let's see here. We are still going to set scroll x to that that variable. Actually, I have it saved. So when it broadcasts restart, what's going to happen is it's going to restart us in that same position. Yup, there we go. All right, let's see. Uh, so because I don't have multiple levels, nothing's going to happen here for me. But but if you look our level is on two so if you have a second costume it's going to set it to that um and of course we can now fall now how about how about preventing it from going too far this way so here's something easily you could do you could do when flag is clicked forever and then if because here we are actually increasing the value of scroll x as we go this way so or i think so right yeah because our variable is changing so it's kind of confusing how everything is in reverse but uh, whatever um okay so if we're gonna do if okay scroll x is greater than uh, so we spawn here, so something greater than that. So I would say scroll x is greater than 1155. Just change this to whatever you think works. And then, so scroll x is greater than that, you're going to set scroll x to that. And so, let's try this here. Yep, so I can no longer go that way. So there's no way for me to jump off the edge like that. Uh, you can do the same at the very end in case they pass the uh, little checkpoint or the whatever whatever it is but I'm not going to do that because I don't really need to so you now have a basic scrolling platformer with basic controls and basic movement and collision so I really hope this video helped you guys out and if you need any help or you have any questions or comments just let us know in the comment section and I will see you guys later. Bye.